Good day, all the attendees at the uh, Finance Academy. Uh, my name is Ron Benham. Uh, I am a, a consultant, I guess actually with a variety of TA centers and very pleased to be here, formerly the Part C coordinator in Massachusetts for uh, a long number of years. Uh, I'm really happy today to have the opportunity uh, for you to listen to Jennifer Kaufman I'm going to refer to her as Jen throughout our brief conversation here uh, in terms of the great work that's been going on in Rhode Island, specifically to financing for early intervention services. And Jen, I would just start off by saying, uh, can you please share uh, what you were able to accomplish? And then I have a few questions I would ask you about that. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Um, and thank you for having me here today. I'm really happy to um, share all the um, really great work that's going on in Rhode Island, and hopefully um, you all can learn from it, as I always learn from sitting in the audience for other talks as such as this. Um, so in the past year, um, our Rhode Island Early Intervention State Team, we were able to secure about $11 million in state recovery funds, and also um, we were able to get the General Assembly to pass a 45% Medicaid rate increase for our EI providers. Well, that is absolutely fabulous. Uh, wonder if you could talk some um, kind of globally around the leadership uh, skills that you used in terms of strategies to achieve this accomplishment. And I'll give you a, a couple of ideas that I'd like you to speak to, which is how did you work in terms of uh, organizing engagement enough to get that type of success from the legislature, um, what types of data uh, were required that you either had or didn't have or needed to uh, get to be able to convince them that this was really needed. And then finally, were there uh, opportunities uh, to work with TA providers um, to help along the way in terms of bringing this success forward? Yeah, so just um, a little bit of background. Um, before taking this position as the Part C coordinator about five and a half years ago, I was actually the director of one of the local early intervention programs and had been with that EI agency in other capacities for about 17 years. Um, so I have a lot of experience in early intervention. And what I witnessed over time was a decrease in rates in 2009, actually, and then a gradual discrepancy between our revenue and our budget needs um, as time went on. Um, there was a point in time when the rates did support what we needed as far as, um, you know, costs and expenses. When I left the position, we were beginning to really have a difficult time hiring quality staff. And I really think this was because we could not offer competitive salaries. People were going elsewhere. Uh, the situation only got worse. Um, and then COVID hit us and that exasperated the issue. Getting a rate increase and more funding into the EI system was pretty much my number one objective when I moved into this position, but I had no clue how to do that. Um, my background is early childhood education. It's not finance, it's not policy, it's not state government. Um, so I definitely had a lot to learn. I would say one of my strategies and whether I knew it at the time or not was I knew that I had to build some relationships. Um, you know, with potential partners within state government, such as um, the Family Visiting Division at our Department of Health, Early Childhood Coordinator at our Child Welfare Office, the administrator that oversees child care system. Um, so I really just immersed myself into the um, state early childhood community so that I could learn how everything kind of works together and operates and meet all the people that, you know, you might need a favor in the future. Um, so I built these relationships also with our early intervention providers. I had already had some familiarity with them and a relationship because I was one of them at one point. Um, so that was sort of um, an easy win right there. Um, but one of the things I also did is improved our relations within our ICC as well. Um, in addition, I connected with other community partners um, that have, 
you know, something to do with early interventions, such as the WIC offices, pediatricians, um, early Head Start, um, and local therapy clinics. So another strategy that I sort of used throughout this time is kind of needed to make early intervention a household name is kind of how I think about it. Um, I made a point to teach anyone who would listen to me, and <laughs> they got sick of listening to me, but that's okay, um, about early intervention within my state office, um, which is actually the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, and I'm actually housed in the Medicaid division. Um, no one really knew what early intervention was. It was this tiny little program when you look at the big picture. Um, so I've pretty much schooled them everything early intervention. And I was able to get in on some early childhood related campaigns to teach the community about early intervention as well over the years. And, you know, one of the things I figured is if the more people who knew about early intervention, the better, especially when it came time to ask for money. Um, another thing I realized I need to do um, in this position is I needed to teach myself. So and when I started the job, I really didn't even know what I needed to know. I So the first thing I did is I signed up for the intensive fiscal um, TA. Um, I was part of cohort five. And I really think that was one of the best time investments that I made at the beginning of my Part C um, career, Part C coordinator career. Um, not only did I learn a lot so much about financing early intervention, but also how state systems sort of in general work. Um, as part of the the TA that uh, I received, we had to sort of choose a project. Uh, and of course, mine was to increase the rates in Rhode Island so that we could hire and retain high quality staff. And being a part of this TA, our cohort five, I realized I had so much work to do. Um, it was, uh, I was taking on something really large. Um, but most importantly, I think that um, what I realized I had to do is just formulate a solid case for the rate increase, which, may, which meant I really needed um, some really great sound data to help tell my story. Um, but in addition to that fiscal TA experience, I also participated in a few other national projects that helped me with these goals. Um, I was part of the new Part C coordinator focus group to help guide the new Part C coordinator materials and training opportunities that we have now. And just being a part of that group taught me a lot about how Part C works. Um, I also participated in the development of the Intensive Leadership Academy and then was a member of the first cohort. And through that opportunity, I felt I learned a lot about pushing policy, strategic planning, utilizing data, um, and putting all the pieces together. Um, so both of those opportunities really helped me in this work. And I think that um, uh, finally another strategy that really helped get this work done is that I developed some short and long-term goals with action steps um, to get the work done. So I created a strategic project plan and I stuck to it. Um, I communicated this plan to our early intervention providers and to our ICC, and they were really helpful with providing input all along the way. Um, having the plan not only kept our eye on the prize, um, but we were able to show members of leadership where we have been, where we were at the moment, and where we were going with timelines, and it was really organized. Well, this is a fabulous story, and I'm very glad to have you sharing this. How long in total did this take uh, for you to accomplish sort of from the beginning uh, until uh, your great success last uh, year in, in the legislature? Yeah, I started working on the project um, really I would say this day I started the job in March of 2017, okay. but I would say formally um, I began the work in probably the fall of 2018. Um, and that's because that's when I started participating in the fiscal TA um, cohort five. And then collaboratively with advocacy occurring within state government and in the community, I would say it probably took about four years of really hard work to, um, to get that increase. Fabulous story. So what advice would you give other state teams uh, with financing goals and projects? Um, I would probably say, um, first thing is organize yourself. You really have to have a strong plan with clear activities, guidelines, timelines, who's going to do the work and, um, you know, and then which leads into my next um, 
piece of advice is using data to tell your story. I think that um, the way data helped me is that um, no one gets money for free, right? <laughs> so I think that we really used a lot of measures that we were tracking um, in order to tell our story. We um, I really looked at the data that we had and decided what else do we need to tell that story? What else do we need so that it is very clear that this is the way to go, that there is no question that early intervention providers needed a rate increase. And that is the, um, the data that I presented to our leadership that gave us the green light to move forward. So I would say definitely use data to tell your story. You're not going to get anywhere without it. I would say um, build and use your relationships to move your work forward. Um, and another thing is I think that being transparent and having complete communication with your stakeholders, if they know what's going on, they can advocate in ways that you cannot as a state employee, which I learned the hard way. And then I would say a lot of patience. Um, you're, you've got to be in it for the long haul. Getting thing do things done in state government is a very so slow process. It can be very disheartening at times, but you just keep at it and keep moving forward and keep to your plan. And um, I think good things will happen. So she persisted, meaning Jen persisted. And the perseverance, obviously, is a very important thing in doing this kind of work. Absolutely. And I, I would say too, like, don't underestimate the power of your stakeholders to, to help do the work, because I don't think the work, I don't think we would have gotten what we needed if we did not have that inside outside advocacy happening. And my stakeholders and the providers um, were very strong voices um, with the General Assembly on uh, finance committee nights, <laughs> and um, giving testimony, we have to encourage people to do that. I, I would also uh, make uh, an assumption, even though I know it's not an assumption, that providing that staffing stability, because I'm assuming like every other field, there were challenges in terms of retaining a staff, but the kind of outcomes that, that that ultimately is going to produce and better outcomes for Rhode Island infants and toddlers and their families. So I want to thank you very, very much. Uh, Collectively, I know across the field, uh, I'm very proud of you and the work oh, that you've you. accomplished. And I think uh, the system as a whole uh, can follow your lead and have other things occur in other states similar to what you've done. So congratulations and thank you for being on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome.